moving on to sports now, and here's Charles Eruka. Charles? Oh, thanks, Ijoma. Welcome to Sports News. Super Eagles Chief Coach Stephen Keshi has reiterated the need for adequate planning and preparation for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. At the TomTom Tom Editor's briefing in Lagos, Keshi said for his team to be successful at the tournament, everybody involved should be ready to play an effective role. Our sports correspondent Austin Okonakwam reports. A relaxed and smiling coach, Stephen Keshi walked into the hall and after a chat with Cadbury's Emil Moscofian, proceeded to exchange pleasantries with some sports editors. The coach also spent some time with those who played football for Nigeria and others who are following it passionately. But before the reason for the gathering is revealed, the organizers have a message for the audience. This is a very important uh, uh, dialogue for us to ensure that we invite uh, all the opinion makers, the editors, the writers, the sports writers uh, to support the, the, uh, the Super Eagles. That's done. It is time to put the big boss on the hot seat. Supported by ex-international Shego Degbami and officials of Cadbury. The first issue to discuss is the recall of Osazel Dewinge and Ike Uche. I will be able to select about 30 manlies or 32, and every one of them going to fight for a position. And if their, name, their names are in there, they still have to prove themselves why they have to be in Brazil. And as the country prepares for the World Cup, does it bother the coach that some core members of his team are not playing regular football at their clubs? It's unfortunate they're not playing their team regularly, uh, but these kids are good football players. They are not kids that I need to teach how to play football. It's just the chemistry that I need to bring into the team, the understanding, the unit. This next question and the answer given by the big boss will excite any player aspiring to feature at the World Cup. How many spaces are clearly open for contest of the 23 players? Oh. So that's it. No automatic shirts. Players must fight for their place. With just 79 days to the kickoff of the 20th FIFA World Cup in Brazil, everyone in this room, particularly Coach Keshi, is hoping for an experience that will consolidate Nigeria's football reputation. Austin Okonakwan, Channels, Television News. Off to the English Premiership now. Manchester City kept their title hopes alive with a convincing 3 0 victory over rivals. Manchester United in the Premier League. A brace from Edin Dzeko and a late goal from Ivorian midfielder Yaya Toure gave the citizens the needed victory, which draws them closer to league leaders uh, Arsenal. Well, Arsenal conceded a late own goal at the Emirates as they shared the spoils with Swansea. The game ended 2-0. Elsewhere, Everton secured a precious away victory as they defeated Newcastle 3-0 and continued the push for a place in Europe. And that's it on Sports News. It's back to you, Joma, with the rest of the news at 10. Well, today is the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. It honors the memory of the millions of men and women, and of course children, who endured the curse of slavery. The theme this year is Victory Over Slavery, Haiti and Beyond. Our correspondent, Oro Lua Shonibare, reports. For over 400 years, over 50 million men, women, and children were transported across the transatlantic ocean as slaves, depicting a dark chapter in the history of mankind. Although slavery has been outlawed, there is still an estimated 20 to 30 million slaves worldwide, with notable practices recorded in forced prostitution and children being conscripted into the military. This group, from the United Nations Information Center in Koyu, Lagos, is commemorating the day. First, with this awareness work to spread the word. It's the 2014 International Day of Remembrance of Victims of Slavery and Transatlantic Slave Trade. This year's theme, Victory Over Slavery, Haiti and Beyond, pays tribute to nations that have suffered from the act. Then, with the crowd seated, discussions begin on the significance of the day. This is the 21st century, and we have to recognize 
what was mistaken, what was terribly mistaken in the past, and not to repeat mistakes. I came from Bosnia where genocide was committed. That means that something evil in human exists still. So we are supposed to be a fighters, and we are supposed to be those who would overcome these urges in ourselves to say, I'm better than you are. It also aims at creating awareness about the dangers of discrimination in workplaces, family homes, and the society at large. Racism, prejudice, exploitation by employers in workplaces, children and women abuses, and all other contemporary forms of slavery ongoing on, ongoing on in this 21st century of information technology. Inspired, this student shares a newfound passion. I'm thinking like the remembrance of slavery, I'm, I'll remember them. And I'll try to, when I grow up, I'll try to like encourage them or, or create this type of seminar to, to remember them. Today, the world remembers to forget the injustice of the past. And through events such as this, countries should continue to seek ways of ensuring equity for all. Oralu Ashonibare, Channel Television News. We're well, living out of the foreign scene where angry relatives of passengers on board the missing Malaysia Airlines have clashed with the police outside Malaysia's embassy in the Chinese capital. Here's Cynthia Are with more. Due to this development, China has asked to see the data based on which Malaysia drew its conclusions. The search for the missing flight MH370 has also been suspended due to bad weather conditions. A multinational search effort is focused on seas some 2,500 kilometers to the southwest of the Australian city of Perth. Then, a Ukrainian ultra-nationalist leader has been shot dead in what officials describe as a special forces operation. Alexander Muzichko, better known as Sashko Billy, died in a shootout with police in a cafe in Ravine in western Ukraine. He was a leader of Right Sector, and that's a far-right group which was prominent in the recent anti-government protests. Plus, the lawyer of Oscar Pistorius, the South African athlete, accused of murdering his girlfriend, has denied claims that the couple were unhappy. Barry Rowe emphasized that among hundreds of loving text messages, only four showed signs of arguments. He made his case while cross-examining a police captain who'd given evidence about the couple's mobile phones. Finally, President Barack Obama plans to ask Congress to end bulk collection of U.S. phone records by the National Security Agency. The New York Times agency would end its systematic collection of data about America's calling habits if everything goes as planned. Phone records would instead remain with telecoms companies only to be accessed by government when needed. And those are the top stories on the foreign scene. Thanks a lot, Cynthia. And the main news again. The debate on voting pattern today triggered a rowdy session at the National Conference in Abuja, forcing the chairman to adjourn sitting. Five policemen and three civilians have been killed in a fresh attack by the Boko Haram in Meduguri, the Borno state capital. And angry relatives of victims of the Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 have clashed with the police outside the country's embassy in the Chinese capital, Beijing. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. Focus on Africa is up next. And Ijo Mahdi Nyato. You have a great night.